this bolt is that bolt is out and this is the ball joint under here these two that bolt and then that nut that nut on the underside have to come off and that frees up the ball joint to be replaced with that one so that's what I'm gonna do now I need to replace this tie rod and the, the boot over it is all torn up the other side is fairly new so there's a couple of ways to ensure that this goes back as close to in line as possible um, I'm going to try both of them so I'm going to measure to the center of this joint here and I'll need a better angle and then also once I loosen the jam nut I will count how many turns out it took to spin that on and uh, then replicate both those with the new one so let me do some measurements and then I'll bring you back so I've also marked right here the flat that's facing straight up I've got the jam nut loose here now and I've also got the nut off the bottom of the tie rod I'm just now that I can get to it 11 and 11 sixteenths to the center so I'll also count spins so it's half one half two half three So 18 and a half turns. I'll go get my new. All right, so comparing the new next to the old, the dimensions from the center out to the face appear to be the same. And the castle nut, I'm sorry, the nut here appears to be the same. So put this on. I said 18 and a half. So we start here. Half one. Seventeen and a half. Eighteen and a half. All right, so now check the measurement here to the center. And lo and behold, I'll be good that that's 11 and 11 sixteenths. So now drop it down. The hole for the cotter pin is kind of pointing straight back. Not 14. I don't think it's 17. No, it's 17. There's the cotter pin that I'm going to use and goes through the hole. And then I don't quite have the fingers of steel to. Uh, there we go. Bend that one out of the way. And that one out of the way. So on this side, new strut, new collar, protector, whatever that is, with a bumper inside. Um, 
new lateral link, new tie rod end, new ball joint. So I think we're good. The other side has all that new stuff other than it also has a, um, or it doesn't have tie rod, new, new. Anyway, I should tighten the, uh, the jam nut. So. Find a 13 millimeter wrench, which Okay, not 13, 12, 12, and then 17 for the large one. I did have it right the first time. So, front end is finished, other than at some point I want to replace the, uh, the brake lines. This one doesn't look so bad. Uh, the other side looked not so good, um, but we'll get to that. Now we can move on to the back and install the new struts with springs there. So that's our mission for this evening, one on this side to replace that and one for the other side there it is and so we're going to start we'll, we'll remove this rubber cap hopefully um, maybe a two-handed job um, I suppose it can wait until the whole thing is out there we go so that's off. Um, as you can see here, I've got some rust. When I get this out of the way, I'll wire brush this clean. And oh, that glove didn't last very long, did it? Um, wire brush this clean and then put a coat of paint on it. So we'll start with removing those bolts down there. And then we'll come up top and that should free the whole thing out of the way. leverage. until it's just flush with the end. And we'll tap on that end. Without damaging the threads.
So we're loose at the top. We're still a little bound up here, so. Kind of shot. So I'm not a fan of that, but this area out in here and all the way around the outside is in good shape. So we'll just, like I said, wire brush it clean and then slather it with some good uh, rusty metal primer and go from there. Some good rusty metal primer on the outside and some good rust-oleum type of coating on the inside and I'll shoot that with some red once uh, the primers dry. I guess while I'm waiting for the primer to dry I may as well go to the other side and disassemble it so because it's more of the same I'll bring you back when I'm doing something different and new. So the primer since I put it on heavy is still drying not a problem. This side as you can see, it's not going to need priming or wire brushing, both the inside and the outer, in pretty good shape. So I will switch it up here and install the driver's side now. And uh, one of the things I want to do is wire brush off the hardware, which is a little rusty, and should make reassembly cleaner. So I'll bring you back when those are all clean and. They've got anti seize on them and they're everything's ready to go. Let's see. On the top. We can get the screws to line up. Lift. put the jack underneath to collapse this. I'm going to tighten the bolts on the top so that the strut is as high. I forgot that I needed to deal with my strut brace. So let me figure out how this will work. And we'll just worry about one side at this point. Looks to be the correct way. Those, I flip it around end for end. Still want to engage the bolts, and well, it looks like it doesn't matter. All right, so doesn't matter, doesn't matter. So, what I was able to do was, with a piece of 2x3 that would fit up in the spot that I needed to, 
I was able to get the strut compressed while I was shoving the knuckle, spindle, whatever, in between the flanges. So I got one bolt in, second bolt in. is on the, the bolts they're all cleaned up and then with the 17 millimeter and the wrench holding the bolt head So after installing the strut and tightening those bolts, it did pull away at the rotted metal that's there. So I'm gonna put a patch of sorts and I've got a template cut out. It's gonna roll around the end and then I'll just put a bead of metal as best I can around there. So I've taken the template and transferred it onto my metal and now I will cut it out. So the patch has been cut, cleaned, surrounding area has been wire brushed back, the welder is ground is hooked up, the fire extinguisher is close by. Oh, let's see how ineptly we can place some welding beads on this. Well, it's not pretty but it's functional. Sounds like it's in there solidly. It's one with the rest of the body. So we'll go with that. <laughs> 